Happy days! After a few years of not using Samsung devices, I finally got a chance to review their latest smartphone. The Galaxy A54 5G. It's a mid-range device running a recent Exynos chipset, a lovely screen and updated camera specifications. In today's video, we'll unbox the device and talk about some first impressions. And in an upcoming video, we'll go through the phone setup, so make sure to check it out soon. We got the device in a larger box, since UK orders on Samsung's website come with the Galaxy Buds 2 until 25th of April. So we'll make sure to review them soon as well. In addition to the phone, which we'll check in a moment, there's the receipt, as well as the leaflet talking about various devices in the Samsung ecosystem. The box shows we got the awesome Lime edition, which is conveniently matching the earbuds. There's a few other colors available as well, and all are awesome. Awesome black, awesome violet, and awesome white, but the choice is yours. The box is quite thin, which might suggest we're not getting a charger. Actually, that's what it says on the back, so I was right. Oh well. But let's open it up, shall we? Straight away, we get the phone at the top, in a plastic sleeve. But for some reason, mine had some strange residue on it. Luckily, it was just the sleeve, so no problem there. Let's check the phone in a moment and first see what else we got in the package. On the back, we got a SIM ejector tool, which will come in handy for the phone setup, for sure. Then there's the USB-C to USB-C cable, which will be useful for charging, as long as you have a USB-C power brick. There's also a quick start guide, as well as some warranty cards. And finally, the phone. Let's take it out of the plastic bag. The design on the back is similar to the latest Galaxy S series flagships, especially because of the camera unit on the back, where all the lenses are separate. We'll talk about cameras in a bit, with a couple of samples. As mentioned, it's the lime color, with a glossy finish. It looks quite premium, and that's thanks to the glass back, which is covered by the Gorilla Glass 5 layer. It's an upgrade from the last year's A53, which had a plastic or glastic back. However, the frame is plastic this year as well, to keep the costs down. The sides are actually painted, and it looks like something in between gold and lime, which looks quite nice. On the right side, we have the power button at the top and the volume rocker above it. There's nothing on the left. At the bottom, we have a microphone array and a downward facing speaker. The phone does have stereo speakers and I'm actually really impressed by them after a couple of days. They're loud and the sound is quite clear and well defined. I'll update you with the full review in some time but it looks like the speakers make up for the lack of the carriage port or the 3.5mm headphone jack. There's also the USB-C port. The phone can charge up to 25 watts, which is not the fastest compared to the competition from Xiaomi or Oppo, where you can go to 120 or even 240 watts, which is almost 10 times faster. There's also no wireless charging. However, you should charge the 5000mAh battery in around 90 minutes, and the battery life should be good from what I've seen and heard so far, so it shouldn't be a big problem. At the top, you have another microphone and a SIM tray. The good news here is that it has two slots, and you can use the second one for either a secondary SIM card or to extend the storage with a microSD card, which is brilliant to see. My model came with 128GB of storage, with the 256GB version also available, but I might extend it with an SD card to keep a few more games stored on the device. Speaking of games, the phone is powered by a 5nm Exynos 1380 chipset by Samsung. It's a brand new mid-range chipset with 8 cores, which should show similar performance to the Snapdragon 778G or 778G+, the latter of which I've been using on the Nothing Phone 1. We'll make sure to test it in a number of games and compare it to the competition. Exynos chipsets have been a downside in higher-end devices, but let's hope it works well in this one. The good sign so far is that I managed to play Call of Duty Mobile in high graphics quality and very high frame rate, and it worked quite smoothly, so I can't complain for a mid-range device.
setting the frame rate to max, I'm guessing 120 frames per second. Unfortunately, it takes the graphics quality to low, but very high frame rate is definitely good enough for this game. Now for the highlight of the device, the screen. It's a super AMOLED one, and Samsung are always known for highest quality screens, so I'm sure it will be great here. It's on the smaller side at 6.4 inches, which means that the phone is more pocketable than some bigger devices, and that might be advantage to some. It's a 1080 by 2340 pixels screen, so Full HD+. But more importantly, it supports 120Hz refresh rate, as well as adaptive refresh rate. It means that you can either have a battery smooth experience in 120Hz, or save some battery with the phone adjusting the refresh rate to the current situation. Definitely great to see. The screen comes with two security features. The first one is the in-screen fingerprint scanner, which so far seems to be working quite well, if a bit on the slower side. It's not as handy as my favorite side-mounted one, but if it performs quite well, I won't complain much. The second is face detection, using the selfie camera. It's not as secure, since there's no depth detection, but I found it to be quite handy so far. Speaking of the selfie camera, it's a 32 megapixel one, which is quite impressive for a mid-range device. You can use the portrait mode, but there's also the wide mode, which allows you to capture more in the frame, which is great to see, especially when taking photos with others. On the back, you also have the 50 megapixel main lens, which apparently comes with a larger sensor, as well as optical image stabilization to help with night photos and recording smooth 4K 30 frames per second video. What's great is that the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and the selfie camera also support 4K recording, which is a standout feature if you want to use this device for vlogging or similar. As you might see in our upcoming video sample, you can actually switch between cameras while recording without the need to stop, which is a brilliant feature in this price range. The last camera is a 5 megapixel macro, but it's not one you'll be using a lot, so let's skip it. I'll have to use the cameras for a bit longer, but the initial few samples I took last night in Edinburgh and on a walk by the lake look quite impressive. Check our full review when it comes. I'll make sure to include more cute ducks and swans. And that's it for this video. So far, I'm quite impressed with this phone and can't wait to test it out more including on my honeymoon in Bali in a couple of weeks. We'll talk more about the software experience of the One UI 5.1 in the phone setup video coming soon, so make sure to check it out as well. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. But for now, thanks for watching!